covered. Do you have any question? Let's start. See, yesterday we have created certain links, right? Yes, so we are. We have on the router basic settings. Yeah, so we have explained our router outlet. So what is the functionality of router outlet? And then our routing module. That is the app routing module. And everything right now we have loaded is either loading. There are two types of loading, preloading and lazy loading in Angular. We will definitely try to cover both the aspects, at least lazy loading. That is very important. And uh, let's move ahead. So if you have any question regarding this, you can tell me. Not really at this moment. I have any question regarding the eager loading because I already know that it will teach us about the lazy loading to avoid those eager loading problems in Angular. So waiting for that. OK. Done. So application is running. Now today we will generate another component that is called the dashboard component.
go down okay so what we need in the dashboard and All of you able to hear Subhuto? Not really. I'm actually going to ask this question. Yes. Uh, you are not audible. Your voice is breaking. Hello. Is it result or I'm still I'm the only one who is not available to, to listen him. Is the brother audible to all? Okay. No, I no. think uh, actually he left us. He left the meeting, yeah. Mm. Audible now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, what I was talking about, we have created one dashboard component. We added here in one routing link and into this dashboard component, we are fetching top heroes or maybe top four heroes, whatever. Okay. Oh, oh, Sorry? Your screen is not visible. Oh, my screen is not visible. Yes. Now visible? Yes, it's popped up. So this is the arrow function. I think you can understand that if you started working with TypeScript, this is an arrow function rather than writing entire function. Which this is a shorthand rule of a arrow function, and we are using arrow function. So simply arrow, whatever data we are receiving from the hero services, we are slicing it with the one to five records and then we are populating this data okay. so i think this is nothing new to you but the same thing we have done with the zero components and now with the dashboard component so now we have two links okay Now we want to add a hero detail component. So let's add it. So I add this hero detail component. Now into this dashboard component, 
dashboard component if i visit dashboard component.html file this is our hero name so what they are doing they are adding one router link over here And in hero component dot html, we have this one. Let's move into heroes component dot html. We have this one. What we are looking. For the time being, comment it out. So, what are the changes we made? We have removed our class selected. So, there is no class attribute is there because we are firing that link from the heroes component.html and the path is detail.hero.id. So in the heroes dot component we have we should have the same path over here. So let's check what is happening over here. If I now I think this router link gets added. <coughs> So, virtual component will be in the next service.
let me finish this thing then i will explain So have you understood what I have done? Let me explain you a couple of things over here. Okay. So in hero detail component, what we have earlier. We are So we have added three things over here. One is the hero service, another is the location, another is the activated route. So this activated route specifically, when any route initializes, say a couple of routes we have, home, about us, contact us, here we have uh, our dashboard and heroes routes. So whenever any route getting activated, from this activated route, we can get whatever parameter we are passing. So whenever we click on that particular uh, icon or maybe box in the dashboard, against any hero from the hero detail uh, section, that detail path. Okay, so we need to capture that ID. So this ID passing as a parameter in the URL. So when I am clicking this, so this is passing as a parameter in the URL. To capture this parameter, we create activated route 
and then from that snapshot dot param map this param map is basically used to pick up the parameter you send from one route to another route so that means with the with the route you can also send the data so there are couple of options right from the component communication so basically you are in the home page and probably you are traversing to a any detail page so you are sending data from one component to another component that might be that may not be sibling component okay so you are sending data from one route to another route so in that case you can use this activated route and this param map to send that data okay so this location is to get the location i mean uh, browser location to our go back button that kind of function to is there so we have just inducted a hero service over here from this hero service we are getting data we have written one function in the hero service get hero function this through this through this great hero function we are getting the specific hero and then we are sending this data in the view page so do you have any question hello which we are passing uh uh, that is that's that would work like a uh, query string right yes i mean can we pass here when we, yeah is it possible we can pass multiple values when we have created this dashboard html right so we have just mm -hmm. it's just the path detail slash this so whenever i mm -hmm. go into the url you can see that the path that is passing is slash 12 it is not like ampersand mm -hmm. yeah okay so if you want to pass you can pass that multiple parameter can be passed and those parameters you can get with the param map so param map okay. id param map name param map value whatever parameter you will pass okay you will get yeah. that so, so ultimately this notification coming from here you have to mention that that id we have mentioned the routing app routing module so this routing mm -hmm. module basically signifies this dashboard component dot html detail slash means whatever value we are passing that is basically an id yeah so okay. your route your route should be there if you want to pass uh name over here so you can you need to add that because it's an exact match that is happening in the route from that hmm. exact match we are getting data into our uh hero Next detail component dot ts5 yeah okay so like that paramap dot get id you will get the id at the same time get get name you will get the name get whatever value you will get you can get that okay hmm okay and most interesting thing in angular when you write angular code mm -hmm. i can write simply this line okay to get the value from to get the value there is uh -huh. no requirement of putting this in the number but whenever we use i mean we try to do from our side i mean whatever data we are passing in the url mm -hmm. we should not allow people to send garbage records because mm. from the from the url we are not having any chance to send any data as a name okay so in id we can send a text right a b c d that yeah. that can, it's also be treated as an id but okay. here we are signifying that should be a number see if anyone replaces that it will throw an error okay and uh, is it possible like we can uh, uh, pass from uh, one component to other component any hidden value also no there is no concept of hidden value uh, okay uh, suppose is the if there is uh, any confidential information which i would like to pass so mm -hmm. like uh, how we are going to pass from one component to other say for example uh, you for want example, to pass uh, bank yes. account detail for example mm -hmm. so, so uh, like bank account detail 
will be certain information right account number ifsc code bank name yes. branch name whatever it is so mm -hmm. those values this is not there is in angular we do not have any scope of hidden fields or hidden variables okay so what so, happen what yeah. happen whenever you send any data hmm. okay that data in the browser that data is getting encrypted okay okay so you don't need to think about uh, that your data will be lost uh, okay by default it is encrypted that's what yes say. yes okay but uh, yeah okay i'll just check uh, with this uh, some more examples there after we'll be in touch with you Prograta, i have a question mm -hmm. uh, in case of the routing part you just said we have to either put this as a number because if you put string then there is a chance that you can bypass any user can bypass this mm -hmm. so uh, i have an observation like in in our info web routing uh, when we use our info web there is a routing mm -hmm. and that routing channel does not change no matter uh, to whichever link we are going so can we create something like that or is it possible here like how is that then implemented can you share your screen and show me yes just give me a minute Your screen is visible it's loading yes visible yes so like this is the routing part here mm -hmm. and let's just say we go to projects mm -hmm. nothing does not change either if mm -hmm. we go to hr it's not changing mm -hmm. so even if we go here mm -hmm. so in no situation it is changing and if we try to type anything like here mm -hmm. Nothing will happen. Specifically. No. So basically, what happened in InfoWave? This is your parent route. Okay. Okay. This is the top level in the browser. Whatever you are actually able to see, this is your parent route. Right. So under parent route, we can have multiple child routes. Okay. Okay. Say for example, I am giving an example. We have a product. Okay. Yes. So. There is a link in the menu. You click, you enter into product listing page. Okay, so this is say for example, you can say that uh, this is a marketing portal or something like that. Okay, uh, so think about Amazon. They are selling everything, right? They have categorized everything. Right. So you enter into an electronics. They append one URL in the electronics section. Yes. So yes. Are, they are they are showing everything throughout the electronics okay Correct. now you enter into the tv section or maybe camera section that mm -hmm. that is now in your control so whenever you enter into that camera section user needs to see all the cameras there is no specific camera so you need to segregate your url according to that that is one thing another thing is like that what will happen just like an info web structure so mm. they have created one home page every time you move into different different url the url remains same but once you refresh the page you comes back into the home page section home page section correct yes because of because this is the home page basically is their landing page okay so they never use this lazy loading concept i think info web uh, they are using dotnet most probably dotnet and i think some parts are in angular also yes okay so so the thing is uh, they didn't create or design that architecture so it okay. should be it should be like if i move into uh, our projects or maybe hr and if i refresh the page i should remain on the hr tab i should not come back to the home page yes so they, didn't, they so they didn't designed in that way okay Yes, so it goes back to the home page. Yes, this is a this is a problem. So everything they have sorted out under home. Okay. Okay. So in under home, what happened? They have created couple of tabs, and inside those tabs, they are pulling out the data. Okay. 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 So yes. there is a one component is there. 
that is the app component or maybe home component whatever they have created okay yes and inside that component they just put their html they didn't segregate their business logic into different different component and different different routes probably so, they did not so, have so this can be problematic yeah obviously problematic okay in real life scenario we never use the, that kind of scenario correct okay. correct because we always go by the appending part if you are going to project Mm. then this particular project link gets appended here with the rest of the link mm. so that is how it is done so when i saw this i was a little confused ki why is this not done in that every time way. every time you refresh you come back to the home page at the home page and there is no yeah. change in the url as well no 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 that is the thing that is why i wanted to ask this question yeah thank you Uh, you can share. Uh, yeah, I'm sharing. So I mean, this routing part is very important. Okay, so going forward, you will be able to see a lot of things regarding this routing part. Okay. Now I would like to tell you about the life cycle hook. It may be little bit of theoretical part. but i have certain i have created one application okay so brat yes i have question so uh, like uh, as you uh, telling that uh, about the lazy loading so uh, like we have a uh, hero detail page so i think it should be come into the like uh, as a, as a child for the hero right so uh, yes. this uh, routing uh, should come in the as a lazy loading no lazy loading is a different concept okay so okay lazy loading is a different concept uh, let me show you that thing okay mm -hmm. yes so probably will understand so you can see there is a three component I, you can see my machine right system Yes, yes. There is a feature one, feature two, feature three. Okay, these are the three separate components mm -hmm. residing. Now I am opening this app routing module dot txt file. So just think about that. How we implement this lazy loading? So whenever there will be nothing, the application will redirect to the feature one. Path match full. Mm -hmm. it will load the feature one component okay okay so there will be blank url at that same time we have port to 00 there is nothing mm -hmm. appended with the port to 00 in that case feature one will be loaded rest of the modules will not going to be loaded okay. same thing happen if url appended feature one the feature one component will be loaded but for feature two and feature three entire module this is to implement lazy loading we have to create our angular structure in terms of modules okay so if you visit over there these are modules okay mm -hmm. so inside this module inside this module what you can see this is a component and everything right yes, so yes. feature one component doesn't need anyone because at the very beginning it is loading yes. so it need nothing but enter into the feature two so into the feature two module you can see that there is a routing module available so what it does basically whenever we implement any kind of lazy loading because feature 2 module is not going to be loaded at the very beginning okay yes. so we have to give a specific path over there so what is happening over here so whenever you click maybe blank url or maybe feature 1 the first module it is getting loaded the rest of the module have no clue where it is whenever you hit the url into that feature 2 path will be the feature 2 okay 
so i think the router link will be there if i move into yeah so there are three links available one is feature one second is feature two and feature three yeah. so whenever user click on feature two that time only feature two module will be loaded so how this happening so basically we bifurcated our loading strategy with load children so load children only works with the module you can see that this is a module yes okay so we have to create our module so mm -hmm. uh, forget about this preloading strategy okay just forget about this preloading strategy it will be a separate thing okay so we will do that thing later but mm -hmm. this this section mm -hmm. okay this 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 is this is a common thing for loading any lazy loading so to work with lazy loading you have to define your angular architecture in the module format okay, okay. so each business logic whatever it is a product a customer an order everything admin everything will be segregated in terms of module and you have to put your substance inside that module now my question is a product module i have created okay so that product module have many things it can happen list of products product detail favorite yes. products feature products everything right yes. so we can we can have separate separate component over there so how we will going to manage those things so those things will be managed from here mm -hmm. okay so whenever your specific path will match okay mm -hmm. okay on that case the respective component will be loading but at initial level or maybe high level this entire module will be the responsible because in the module you have added four components four components has its own html css pages and ts files yes so those components can be configured at the inner level not at the higher level so whenever we load we load the entire module yes and this thing you can understand when we generate any build for angular to mm -hmm. run ng build production build whatever it is uh in that case you can see that that build size in the in the folder angular will create build size in chunks so probably what happened that if we have everything in the over eager loading mm -hmm. the build size will be in the single file Single file Angular will create the build, but yeah. when we have a module concept, mm -hmm. Angular break up these big builds or big files into small small chunks of files. So whenever user hit that URL, that specific file will be loaded in the browser. Okay. 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 Thank you. Ah, uh, Subodh, I have a question here. Mm -hmm. uh, suppose we have a shared business logic and we are planning to develop or architect this as a uh, in a modular based approach in this case uh, is it manageable to share those business log logic inter module yeah why not so for uh, example you have create product you have order hmm. you have customer so whatever ui is probably whenever you have a ui it may happen that that ui represents think about an admin section where mm -hmm. admin section a single page will represent that specific customer order transactions every data okay yeah, so yeah. all the all those modules will be there but the respective section that screen will represent a certain section certain component maybe this is a whole screen okay so i have showing that this is a customer information this is my orders okay these are the these are the transactions so everything will be a component 
if yes. doc a page will be there will be a page okay a customer detail page or whatever it is but that detail page itself actually is a bundle of couple of components so that yeah. component will get the data from the respective module uh, then in this case how does the that lazy loading works because uh, if we have the uh, product module if we have the separate as a, a cart module in that application and mm. we need some components from the product module in the cart mm. so at the same time case, in that case in that case in that case for this admin section you have to you have to create uh, a such a module over there you if you think that your particular module have uh, multiple components or maybe deals with multiple module you can import those modules into your uh, components and you can share data there is no difference but if you think that you need a separate module for that you can create that you that can import okay, any, yeah you can create anything you say think about this router module this router module is getting exported right yes and at the same time you can export your product module you can export your order module that is okay that we can do but i am thinking about the lazy loading concept over here i mean if we lazy can import loading, lazy loading basically deals here that means whatever router link you have presented those router link in the in the case of eager loading if you see into if you go you will see that there is a single file it will create as a bundle yes when, whenever we break it up how many uh, modules you create that will break up your business logic that will make your application more faster so always try to think in a manner how to segregate your business logic into different different modules chahe uske liye if you need to create 20 modules create it create that 20 modules okay it is always okay, better it. to always better to create 20 modules rather than putting multiple components in single module if you yes, feel that it. there will be a module that deals with customer and product you can create that module create it so that when user will go into the browser automatically that respective chunk will be loaded the rest of the things won't be loaded over there so application will be much faster yeah got you thank you okay now today this is a life cycle hook i am actually searching for this Let me run this. So you can see this. Everything you write in this particular way, these are all eagle loading. In one shot, Angular will load entire stuff. So first of all, there is a one question for you, you people. So what do you mean by hook in Angular? 
these are all life cycle hooks available yes. what do you mean by hook subrata yes uh like hooks are like uh, uh, the event like uh, means uh, sometimes we need to call a particular function on particular event in particular uh, time like uh, means uh, when we want to call that particular function so that's why we use hook and uh, like uh, there are some ng only and uh, ng do check so it will call a particular time like uh, when a user uh, uh, do some check or like do some changes like particular so on browser uh, event like uh, while the user click on button something so that particular time we can do particular functionality right yeah that is that is true mm -hmm. so mainly when we run through the angular life cycle okay so in that life cycle sometimes angular running through component sometimes angular running through dom element sometimes angular check whether that the dom is getting loaded or not so these are the different different stages of applications we have and in real life scenario what happen that we need those events or hooks to process our data sometimes when when a particular dom is rendering or sometimes what happened that you enter certain text uh, into a text box and as per your action we need to render a certain component okay so there will be multiple scenario over there and whether we need to check whether dom is loaded properly or not so these are the life cycle hook angular has these are all everything are interfaces you have yeah. created one model or interface over there heroes so these are yeah. same thing these on changes on in it these are all interfaces okay so it's a inbuilt interfaces that angular cli comes with and this is the order that the way life cycle hooks actually fires okay the first thing that fires to this is the constructor so constructor is the first thing so if you think that your sudden business logic you have to write in ng on in it but before ng on in it fire you need to get certain data so then those business logic you have to put in in the constructor but to make an application very fast constructor should be less populated that is the thing if you put more and more stuffs in constructor that means at the very beginning you are putting pressure on that particular component to load okay so next hook that is coming is the ng on changes so ng on changes mean any changes happens in the dom okay any changes happens in the dom Just see that I just clicked on the life cycle hook. Okay. What happened? Constructor loaded. Ng on init loaded. Ng do check loaded. Ng after content init loaded. Ng after content check loaded. Ng after view init loaded. Ng after view check loaded. ng do check loaded ng after content check loaded and ng after view check loaded so this is the order of loading of life cycle hook okay so go back to this particular example the so next life cycle hook is ng on changes so ng on changes when ng on changes triggers if you do after loading the dom if you do any activity or any changes okay maybe an human intervention you change something entire certain things in that text box or maybe clicking on the radio button that thing is tracked by ng on changes ng on init is the most important life cycle hook in our angular life cycle 
we do probably 80% work through this life cycle whenever any life cycle any hook actually fires ng do check basically fires ng do check life cycle hook if you want to check anything before these life cycle hooks if after content in it after content check after view in it view check you can check in the ng do check life cycle hook and the another most important life cycle hook is ng after view in it so this ng after view in it basically confirms your dom is loaded or not there will be in practical scenario there will be n number of business logic you have to write whenever certain grid or maybe certain component loading into that dome then that business logic you have to fire you cannot take those business logic into the ng on in it so you have to write that business logic into your ng after viewing it okay what is the importance of ng on destroy in angular we have deal with our observables and the subscriptions okay so whenever we say for example we are calling a service service basically subscribing at observable and uh, sorry service is getting data from the api and you are subscribing one observe that observable from the component to get the data so this subscription angular has two types of subscription one is finite subscription another is called the infinite subscription so what is finite subscription and what is infinite subscription so whenever any request goes and that request automatically completed and that uh, response actually getting closed response means i am not talking about api response the chain of a uh, cycle getting closed automatically then uh, this is called a finite subscription some example is the api call what is the infinite subscription sometimes we have two sibling components and we have to share data between one component to another component we created one subject or behavior subject and we subscribe that and that subject or behavior subject emits data and that data will be reached to that next component okay so this is a manually triggered process so unless and until you destroy this subscription this subscription keep on emitting for the entire application and it will increase the heap memory of the angular and it will ultimately slows down the angular architecture uh, sorry angular application and when the build size will be build size will be at very higher end okay so this manual subscription or custom subscription needs to be destroyed in the ng on destroy so when this ng on destroy fires when you move from one component to another component maybe moving from right now one route to another route this ng on destroy will fire okay so these are the examples of life cycle hook now i have theoretically added all information into this life cycle hook so read carefully okay read read carefully and practice it in your end so this is nothing but a simple i have added a simple you can see that life cycle hook and uh, this life cycle component dot ts and if you go into the html part this is there is nothing so you just create one life cycle hook and you can check how this life cycle hook actually works okay so probably the best example right now if i go over here so there is nothing now i have created life cycle hook you can see that in the after view check is loaded now if i click on the heroes you can see that ng on destroy loaded so whenever you going out from any component that time your ng on destroy life cycle hook actually fires so in that ng on destroy hook you have to de uh, destroy your custom events custom subscriptions and everything so you read it theoretically and if you have any questions you practice it
if you have any questions then we will clear doubt tomorrow okay so tomorrow i will assign you some workshop okay so tomorrow i think tomorrow will be wednesday so if you have any question then we will answer those questions and then i will assign certain workshop to you people and you have to complete this workshop uh within a week okay so whatever workshop is there i will try to explain what is the functionality is there and what is my expectation you have to complete this workshop and you have to show me okay so within two days by by friday you have to complete this workshop so be prepared with it and people who won't be able to complete this workshop i will make sure that those people should not be part of this training anymore so this is a particular thing i told you at the very beginning that this training will be a hands on training and whatever workshop will be given here and whatever information we have covered so far from those information you can complete this workshop Uh, I have a question, little question before uh, before reading uh, the documents for today's training. That mm -hmm. is, what is the difference between the destructor and that uh, last one, that uh, that hook? What is the hook name? Destroy. Like, ng destroy. Yeah, ng destroy hook and destructor. The destructor we generally uh, do not use in Angular. Okay. So we have constructor okay. and ng ng on destroy. Because I ask this because we have the ng init hook as well as uh, the constructor. That's why init, init basically all init hooks. Okay, mm -hmm. all init hooks when Angular in, that component basically initialize that time whatever we want to do we can put at that init. Okay, and this after content checked or after con in uh, view in uh, after view in it whatever it is, these are the basically when that loading is getting completed, that time we can segregate our business logic. Okay, I mean I mean in practical scenario I can tell you there is a ten percent Angular developer who can wisely use these lifecycle hooks because if you know you can. Develop a beautiful application in Angular. If you don't know, then probably what you will do, you will delay certain things. You add promise. Probably you will add set timeout in your ng on in it. But these are not the best practices to develop any Angular application. So I'm telling you, maybe it looks very simple that there is a seven eight lifecycle hook theoretical things are there. Okay, so I'll suggest you search lifecycle hook examples in the YouTube. Okay, in YouTube, you search the lifecycle hook examples and you watch those videos. Then only you can understand that how wisely we can segregate our business logic in different different lifecycle hooks. Okay. If any person understand input output, event emitter, subscription, and if they can use lazy loading. And they can, they know how and which lifecycle hook they should use. Probably, I can say you have done with seventy percent of Angular. You have done with seventy percent core skills of Angular. So knowledge of lifecycle hook is very important. You go into uh, before because if I take those examples, it will take me another two to three days. Okay, so you go in YouTube. Search for lifecycle Angular lifecycle hook examples. There will be lots of videos will be there. You just watch those videos. Then you probably get to know about the importance of lifecycle hooks, and it should remain in your mind. Whatever you you can forget many things, okay, but you should not forget the lifecycle hook and when and which one we should use. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. I think that is from my side. So, if you have any 
question and doubt we will try to answer tomorrow okay okay thank you okay thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.